So I told my friend Joe that I would make a dress for slash with her. Um, this guy. So how seven tea house dress. Top end dress. I'm going to probably make a dress. And I really should have got my glasses. Dang it. Whatever. We're dealing. I'll just hold the paper this far away and then I can read it. Um, so I thought I'd go over first steps before starting anything. Um, I have one distinct advantage over Joe when it comes to making this dress. I've made it twice before. I'm wearing it now. Um, so I thought what I would do first, step one is you take your measurements. And looking at this dress, can we put your pan down? Your situation right now is very precarious. It's got a tie around the waist. So the really the only measurements you need to worry about too much are your bust and your hips because it needs to be able to have room up here, though admittedly voluminous. And hips, there's kind of a lot. It's oversized. What does this say? No closures, pull over the head and tie. There you go. So, it gives you bust, waist, and hip. How do you take those? Where do you take those? I don't know if you can tell I'm in front of a mirror here. I'm trying to get this right. You don't want things to be super tight, so don't be like, <gasps> I'm gonna bring it in. All right, don't try and shrink the measurement. And generally you take this in the clothes that you'll be wearing under the clothing you're wearing. So not usually over clothing, but you can see in the back, it's parallel to the floor. So it's basically parallel all the way around. Measurement 41. These haven't changed in a while for ill or for good. Waist, um, you could do this with elastic. I tend to put my hands like on my hips, like where I would bend and feel for the skinny part, which is right about here. This is kind of a high-waisted dress. No. I was reading on the wrong side. I got really excited. Waist is like 32. And hips, this is over the fattest part of your lower body which might actually be closer to your thighs. You can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm putting the measuring tape on and then kind of raising and lowering it to get a feel for where the fat part is. It's about 42 for me, also hasn't changed. So if we look at these measurements, To accommodate bust, that would put me in a size 14. That is, in fact, the size that I made. I can tell because I traced my pattern and wrote down what size I traced out. I actually think if I wanted, I could make the size down. There's a lot of room here, but whatever, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. Because if I, um, what you learn is that when they, who make patterns, whoever they are, make them such that the difference between the measurement up here, so that's about 38 for me. Again, hasn't changed in dog years. The measurement up here and the measurement here, they aim for two inch difference. Obviously, I have more. In case you can do math, that's three inches of difference. So if I wanted, what they, what you can do is make one for this size. So that would be between 10 and 12. I would not make smaller than 12 because that's my hip measurement. And then what I might have to do, were this not such a big dress, what I would have to do is like make sure that I left room 
to accommodate. That involves pattern manipulation. We're not getting into that. So since I already have cut out a size 14 and I already know that a size 14 works on me based on my two extant garments, probably not the right word for that. I'm going to probably make a size 14 because why not go with what works? So if I look at this, this actually at the bottom tells me finished measurements. So if I wanted to look at 12, it's saying I would have 45 inches at the bust, 51 inches at the hips. I could make a 12. That would be fine. It would fit. But I'm going to be honest, I'm lazy, and I don't want to trace everything out again because I typically trace out my patterns, not cut them out. That's a choice. You can look it up. Um, then we have here, there's a whole section on fabric requirements. So, oh, I left out the pockets on mine. Maybe I'd include it. What's the difference between B and C and E and F? Can we tell? Is it length? Oh, it's the front bit. It's a skinnier tie. I like the wide tie. So I'm making B and C, dress B and C. Uh, and that has to do with the length. So the, does it tell me the length? Yeah, the length of B is 41 inches and the length of C is 49 inches. So what I could do is take this measuring tape and put 41 at my back. That's the shorter length for me. That's the right length because I'm short. So if I make, that means I'd be making dress B and I look at my size and it says it depends on the width of my fabric. So I think I have wide width fabric, which is 58 to 60 inches. That means I would need three and seven eighths yard. We'll call it four. And it's almost certainly to accommodate the length. So if I was making the longer length, knowing that I'm short, I might be able to actually use less fabric because I'm short. So if you wanna sew and save on fabric, be short. If you're not short, I'm sorry. If I, my fabric is narrower, it looks like I need four and three quarter yards. So next up, when we talk about this pattern, we will talk about, and I'll put these measurements on here in case I forget what they were, um, and write down that's the size I think I'm gonna make. That's what I always do. Um, next up, we'll talk about fabric preparation and laying out everything and cutting out everything. So those are our next steps. Um, if you wanna get started on that, pre-wash your fabric. Uh, but there's some specialty tips in there, like if you're using linen, maybe zigzag the two cut edges first so it doesn't unravel as much. And I mentioned that, Joe, because you said you're using linen. Anyway, that's it for me today. Hope you found this interesting. If you didn't, oh well. Maybe you'll find my next video interesting. Maybe you won't find any of them interesting, in which case find someone else. Bye, everybody.